you really look at the first wave of cloud computing, it was all around just virtualization and consolidation. What it meant is that, you know, enterprises had a whole bunch of servers, storage, network, all of it extremely underutilized or misutilized all over the place. So as a result, the best thing to do was consolidate, uh, use virtualization technologies and get more efficiency out of, you know, your server storage network and therefore your data center. However, as you progressed, customers realized that, you know, that was not a very efficient way of doing it eventually because they just had ended up creating a performance problem for themselves. They started creating a security problem for themselves. If you had a 50 core server, you had to put a virtualization layer on top of it. We call it hypervisor. That hypervisor controls all of the management of the server, the storage, the network, the backup, and so on and so forth. Now, as a result, what this meant was there was a performance over overhead because of the virtualization layer, and you literally had a third-party software sitting on, you know, what is supposed to be only yours, which means you shared infrastructure with other tenants. What it meant is bank A could very well be sharing the same server as bank B, and there is no way to really secure them beyond a point, and you can only hope that it is completely secured. why we call it generation two is that we completely innovated on the whole virtualization technology. So the first thing about generation two is that we have something called an off box virtualization, which is absolutely unique to Oracle. What it means is that there is not a single piece of Oracle code or virtualization code that is running on the server that is given to you as a customer. All of that is running on the network. Now that is unique to us because now what it means is that I can have my data traffic separate, I can have my storage traffic separate, I can have my network traffic separate, and I can have my customers completely isolated from any other customer. Now therefore there's huge amount of security. And since now the server does not have any major virtualization running, my performance is at a bare metal level. So I, you spoke about two uh, fantastic areas, ROI and efficiency. So essentially the way it is translated is cost, efficiency because you can now have the entire server and entire storage and entire network to yourself. The third thing is obviously security and I think that's an extremely important aspect of Gen 2. Essentially today, you know, the way cloud computing worked for customers is the cost was essentially I had more and more tenants on the same infrastructure. So therefore I could share costs among multiple, you know, customers. As a result, the cost went down. Actually, the cost did not go down for enterprises because let's look at the difference between what startups wanted, what developers wanted and what enterprises want. There are three different worlds as far as customers, you know, as far as the market is concerned and cloud computing is concerned. Developers by default love disruption. So they're perfectly happy to have a shared environment which they can keep bringing up and down. So therefore they are more worried about agility, flexibility and the latest technologies are they available to them. Enterprises are looking at security. They're looking at making sure that their investment is protected. So they have made millions and millions of dollars of investment to run their current setup. They have license agreements with their current software providers. They'd want to still do innovation. Therefore they want cloud computing. However, they have a certain methodology with which they work. A large bank, let's say they have 50 million customers and they want to acquire more and more customers and they want to go down the cloud journey. Now it's not easy for a large bank to say, I'll shut down my core banking environment. I'll shut down my internet banking for a few days just because I'm going down the cloud journey. So they need to be able to, you know, operate in a fashion that they have to continue to run their existing environment, which we call business as usual. And then how do I go about adopting the cloud journey for agility, flexibility, get the ROI, get the security going and so on. That's what Oracle allows you to do. What Oracle essentially is saying is we will lift and shift, but we will not just lift and shift, we will move and improve. Essentially what that terminology means to a customer is that yes, you have a certain amount of inefficiency in your on-premise data center. We will go ahead and 
make sure that some of those inefficiencies are reduced at a lower cost. Therefore, we'll move your workloads as is to the cloud, but we'll improve the way in which it runs. We'll make it more secure. Think about it like the concept of a prepaid card in the telecom world. So today, if you bought a prepaid card, you could go ahead and use voice services, you could use data services, you could use you know, uh, music services, you could use streaming services, you could use video services, you could use DTX services. That's what a prepaid card offers you, all right? Now, think about it from a cloud computing world. What if I gave you a prepaid card and said that, look, here's a prepaid card called Universal Credits from Oracle, and you can go ahead and use any infrastructure or platform cloud service. And there are hundreds of them. At any point in time, you can bring it up and bring it down. Federal Bank, right, which is a bank, you know, out of Kerala, uh, they had this very unique problem uh, where they were opening up ATMs across the country. Now, as we all know in India, uh, if you look at ATMs, uh, how do you find out what's the best place to have an ATM? All right. Uh, because you will find that there are clusters of ATMs, you know, in a particular place. And there is the, and, and if your ATM, whether you used a federal bank ATM or if, whether you used a competitor's ATM, uh, up to a minimum number of ATM transactions, you really can't charge a customer. But the bank itself is incurring a cost. So therefore, we did a project using Autonomous State of Warehouse, which is essentially analyzing what is the best place for federal bank to have an ATM or to close down an ATM.